Hello, this is Brian Shannon from AlphaTrends.net. Today is Thursday, the 26th of June, 2008, and uh, a lot of people got hurt in this market badly today because they haven't been listening to the message of the market. And the message of the market has clearly been lower highs and lower lows. A lot of people were hoping the Fed could save the day yesterday, but obviously they had limited power and uh, really didn't do anything anyway. So um, I think a lot of people were taken off guard by the magnitude of today's uh, rally in particular in, in light of the fact that it's been down so hard recently. Uh, I'd been talking about the measured move, how that projected a target down towards 130 and it, clearly you know, that's about where the market opened today and continued lower than that. If we look at the weekly time frame I've been saying for uh, you know the last two weeks or so that a test of these lows is not unlikely. It should be expected at some point and perhaps we'll even go further than that. If you look at uh, what oil did today which was uh, up, broke out past that range and we'll take a look at that in a moment uh, you'll see that uh, that's obviously one of the factors as well as uh, a negative reaction to research in motion earnings that uh, we had seen yesterday after the close um, you know, rim closed down here at 123, and it just shows the danger when the direction of that five-day moving average, you want to be basically trading in the direction of that for shorter-term traders. And um, I've, I've got a new headset, by the way. Hopefully, that's going to clear up some of the issues with uh, iTunes, and maybe that'll start working normally on uh, iPods and that sort of thing. But the S&P is coming close to these lows once again. Will it find support once again in that area? That's anyone's guess. Right now, the trend is lower. It's guilty till proven innocent, and trying to pick a top or bottom is, is a fool's game. The average price since the beginning of the year, we haven't looked at that in a while, according to the VWAP, Volume Weighted Average Price, is about one. 136. So obviously we're lower on the year, but uh, you know, most people are trapped in a losing position. We had a lot of people get trapped above that uh uh, VWAP line right up in there. A lot of people are thinking that was the uh, end of the decline. Uh, my email box was filled up with uh, you know bullish uh, prognostications from people, but you know when the direction of the 200-day moving average is declining, that to me signals a bear market. Uh, that's uh, something that I uh, wrote about in my book, and I uh, haven't mentioned it in a while uh, too much. I don't want to be a pain in the neck about it, but I've been getting a lot of great feedback from people. This is is what uh, T. Kevin Fee, a 35-year veteran specialist on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, had to say about it. He says that uh, you know it's a, it's a great book, etc. You should read it. He spent 35 years on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange making markets. Um, so I, I value his opinion a lot, and hopefully uh, that'll motivate you to take some action as well. And be sure to visit his site, by the way, tradingwithtk.com. He's got some great insights each day. But the S&P 500 again, we've seen this lower highs and lower lows. Uh, we saw yesterday the market tried to get back above this 132 and a half level and was unable to hold after the Federal Reserve uh, meeting and it got back below yesterday's VWAP and back below the declining five-day moving average. So a lot of problems still with this market. Um, where it, it goes is, is anyone's guess as far as what the ultimate low is, but we're starting to see some panic here and uh, there could be some trading opportunities to the long side, but only for super, super aggressive traders. Look at the, you know, today's action. It, it opened weak and it was weak all day. The direction of the daily VO app was down all day, lower highs and lower lows. It couldn't sustain any bounce whatsoever. A lot of danger still in this market. And if we take out these lows near uh, 126, then I think you'd see a, you know a quick, a quick move down towards at least 125, and uh, then we we can start looking further back in time to uh, levels like you know like like right in here from 122 and a half 123. I don't want to get too carried away with these big downward projections though, because we've obviously dropped quite a bit here the last three or four weeks, and uh, you know the rubber band's getting stretched a little bit. Bounces do occur in a downtrend, but uh, as we see, they don't typically last in the path of least resistance continues to be lower. The Russell 2000 was uh, what I said yesterday, you know, even just eyeballing it, we could see that it still looked like there were big problems ahead for this market. And, uh, you know, we still, uh, you know, today, obviously, we got that. The uh, the, the market, um, I thought that if it broke below the 70, uh, I'm sorry, if it, if it broke back above the uh, you know, the 72 to 72 and a quarter, then maybe it would have a chance of recovering. And also said that, uh, you know, basically breaking below 
these these lows in here would uh, you know near 71 would send us to a minimum downside projection of $70 a share that we got from that uh, measured move but we also have to remember that on this hourly time frame we've got this bigger projection and, and this is just a classic you know simple technical analysis you don't need all these fancy oscillators and indicators support once broken tends to act as resistance that five-day moving average was declining which told you don't trust any rally attempt and uh, while there's always the possibility a market could turn unless it takes this high out there was no reason to be looking at the long side and obviously it didn't do that so we've got this market making these lower highs and lower lows it's come down to our first level of seventy dollars a share and it, it doesn't look like it's uh, you know slowing down right you know in here the uh, you know the one minute chart for today close pretty much near the lows in here and uh, you know now we've got end of the quarter uh, selling might uh, exacerbate this situation here uh, Friday and on Monday as well so the uh, head and shoulders pattern that we've been looking at which is just glaringly obvious in here um, it, it indicates a move down uh, four points from the head of uh, height of the head which again we can just uh, for visual purposes grab that line and drop it to the breakdown point at the neckline and that gives us about a $68 projection on the downside and realistically that brings it right around towards these this low right in here and there's there's really no reason not to believe that that couldn't happen or really probably shouldn't happen because the weekly time frame looks like it's starting to catch up with the S&P 500 and we've got this prior level of resistance that acted as support in here and we've got a fractal of that with this support acting as resistance on the uh, on the uh, 30 minute time or the 60 minute time frame here the uh, you know once you once you realize how to correctly interpret price action and anticipate what might be next based on what the market's telling you it's it doesn't matter what time frame you study because it's all the same uh, regardless of what time frame you're working on support broken tends to act as resistance resistance tends to act as support etc the U USO uh, we've been talking about how the trend in oil is is you know continues to be just a classic uptrend bullish picture higher highs and higher lows and we've been stuck in this range of 106 to uh, 113 and here late in the day we got to push above that level I said that I don't really want to make any bets in here but the path of least resistance is higher and these uh, sideways uh, uh, movements typically resolve themselves in the direction of the primary trend it doesn't mean that oil can't reverse higher lower from here but now we've got a rising five-day moving average we've got this resistance taken out in here and it looks to me like oil ought to probably continue higher we ha now have uh, you know if you're long in here we've got a higher high I think that you know worst case your stop probably goes down in here and uh, you know I wouldn't be betting against such a strong uptrend basically the cues then that well let's take a look at the financials I haven't looked at those in a few days but they just continue to be awful anyone who's bought in here or has come on television and said they were good buy and that sort of thing has clearly been wrong anyone who bought these you know financials basically in the last four years has been wrong and by the way I, I saw on uh, uh, CNBC you know just like a great case against buy and hold General Motors at a 50 something year low unbelievable but uh, you know there's no good stocks there's only good trades and right now the the good trade in the financials is this short side they continue to be plagued by big problems and where you know eventually bottoms is anyone's guess this uh, consolidation in here turned out to just be a, another pause within this downtrend. The rubber band's getting stretched in here, and we'll, we'll likely see a bounce at some point. It could come soon, but uh, I, I wouldn't be a buyer in here. It's just way too risky. Preservation of capital is rule number one. You have to play a very strong defense if you want to be around uh, for the next uh, time that, the, that those trades become easy once again in the financials. Like they were, you know, when, the, when you've got a strong uptrend, it's easier to be long but now it's just easier to be short the path of least resistance is lower the Nasdaq 100 was down uh, just under two dollars or four percent here today we saw earlier in the week that the downtrend was confirmed yesterday by by making this uh, this high and then the lower high this low here then the lower low yesterday it tried to recover but it came up to a declining 10-day moving average now we've got the 10 below the 20 the 20 below the 50 the 50 flattening out and interestingly enough the 50-day moving average is crossing up through the 200-day moving average which a lot of people call the the golden cross or a time to buy 
don't use that as a rule to buy. Um, it just it, it's not a good indicator. If you look at uh, you know when when the uh, when the 50-day crossed down through the 200, it's supposed to be the death cross, and that occurred pretty close to the lows, really right around in here at about 44. So you were supposed to be a seller in there and now a buyer in here. It just doesn't make sense. I don't want to go on too long about that, but we've got a downtrend in the NASDAQ 100 and things have been deteriorating uh, as uh, you know, we've been we've been looking at it saying it looks like it appears to to want to continue lower. It is continuing lower. We've got this market in a clear downtrend. This was the level we were looking for it to potentially Potentially go first right around 45 and a half uh, to come in and close this gap and now let's see if we can get some stability uh, but it still remains a very very risky market there's nothing in this market here saying that the Nasdaq 100 ought to be bought quite the contrary it's in a downtrend it's guilty till proven innocent if you're not a super aggressive and disciplined trader your best office in your best position is in cash on the sidelines and that's something I've been saying since about uh, up in here